Hello, and thanks for coming here to this session. So I'm Antonis, and uh, I'm also a Docker captain. Uh, I work for a company called Sourceler, and uh, we're providing developer environments in the cloud either through our online ID or standalone with our second product. And today we're going to talk about Docker Compose. So at first, we'll see the new things that Docker Compose introduced. And this allows us to have applications deployed to a Storm cluster. And then we'll see how we can use this declarative format, so Docker Compose, in order to have an application through all of the stages of our software delivery pipeline, from development to CI to production. Of course, this is a very fast talk, so we'll go through everything, but I'll be happy to talk to you about uh, later on. So Compose version 3. Actually, I was really excited when I saw that you know, the DAB files for the ones that you have seen them before, the distributed application bundles, were replaced by Docker Compose, because Docker Compose was a, a format that we already knew, and that was something that worked for, for a lot of people. So Docker Compose version 3 introduces some new features in the Compose format that allows us to deploy services to a Swarm cluster. Let's see, that actually there are three basic categories of these new things that were introduced. For, so first of all, you have some deployment semantics. So you can say the, appli the application state, for example, how many replicas you want to run, how do you want to do the updates, rolling updates, etc. You have node constraints. So if you saw the keynote with uh, Diogo earlier, you saw that uh, the, he had different places in the swarm. So he could uh, send specific containers to specific nodes. So you can do this uh, with placement and uh, node constraints. And also, you've got some things out of Docker Compose. And these are things that uh, imply some uh, relation between containers. Because the orchestrator is operating on the, on the container level. So if you have something like volumes from or network from, then these things will not work in the, in the version 3 of, the, of Docker Compose. Let's now see some code examples of how you can leverage of these new things to, to, to have the awesomeness. So first of all, you can have rolling updates really easily with uh, the new version. So you can have, for example, a service with uh, six replicas. And you can uh, define how many replicas you want to be updated at, in, at this point in time. So with this simple format, using the deploy key, which is a new one, and the health check, which is also a new one, I can say that, you know, at this point in time, you want to, to close down two replicas. So from six, we'll go to four. Then two new replicas will be booted up. And because I have a health check there, the containers will not only be running, but the containers will also be healthy when uh, the, the deployment process will go on. So we'll go from six to four, then two containers will boot up. These containers will become healthy through the command here. And when they are healthy, then we'll move on to the next two and the next two. So this allows us to have rolling updates with zero downtime, because in such case, the application will not have users hitting the application and getting back a 503, for example. Then we can, have, we can use the, the placement constraints, and uh, we can have uh, things like nodes. So I, can, I want this service to run a specific node. This is not very nice because you have an orchestrator and you want to use all the nodes, but for some specific reason you want to do this, so you can. You can also have uh, swarms from different operating systems. So you, can, you might have some Windows machines and some Linux machines. And you can say that certain services will run only on certain operating systems. This comes for architecture too. And you can have your own labels. So you can label your cluster and then you have uh, DCI compliance, for example, or security nodes where you have uh, more secure services there. And you might have, for example, I.O. intensive services where you want to go to, to nodes having an SSD drive underneath. One very nice thing is uh, the resources key in the deploy config. So the resources allows us to do two things. The first one is to limit containers. This was something that we had before. But now we have also something called reservation. Reservation means that I can say, you know, do not, do not schedule this container to a node having less than 256 megabytes. So in this case, if you have a node with one gigabyte of RAM, and then uh, we try to, to schedule five tasks to this node, then the fifth task will not land on the node because the node is not capable of, uh, of handling it. Of course, secrets, which is a very nice feature that we, that we saw introduced in, the, in uh, Docker Swarm, is also part of Docker Compose. This is a very nice thing. Because you can easily either create secrets, so you can define a secret on the top level key and say, you know, take this secret from this file, or you can use global secrets created before you. It's, a, it's, a, it's operating in the exact same way that operates in, in volumes and networks. So you have a top level key defining either external dependencies or new uh, things to be created, and then you can define 
in each service which secrets will get uh, uh, added and in which uh, alias. So it's really easy to have secrets introduced in Compose, and you can have your secrets, for example, in your CI, uh, in your CI server, and then deploy the secrets from there directly to the swarm. So now that we saw all the, all the nice things that we can use in order to actually have Compose and use Compose, then we want to, to have this, uh, this nice thing operating in, in all the stages of our pipeline. So we saw how we can use it in production, but production is not everything. We want to develop our applications and we want to also test our applications or integration testing and uh, that kind of stuff. So how do we take the pipeline and we improve it? So a typical pipeline is something like this one. So you have three different stages. You have development, you have CI, and you have uh, your production service. So the problem before was that you had a wall here, so the developers were developing the applications and testing them, and when the application was ready, they threw the application over the wall, and then to the operations guys who were responsible for running the application in the cluster. With Docker being introduced, we tried to, to take that, down that wall and say that, okay, you know, developers are also responsible for creating the image format, the, the deployable unit of the application. But this is not still enough because the environments were different. So you had different databases, for example, or a replica set in the production data in the production system that was just one node when you were developing local locally. So the dream would be to create something like this. You have you need to have a development environment, a staging environment, and a, a CI environment and a production environment that are exactly the same. They have the same replicas, for example, for a replicated database. They have the same runtime which you can use with Docker and, and that kind of stuff. So using Docker Compose, I believe that we can slowly create an environment and a pipeline that imitates this, uh, this design here. And step by step, we can, uh, we can move there. So let's say that we have created our deployment Docker Compose file. So we have a Docker Compose file which is ready for deployment, and we can use it and deploy service, and we're happy with it. But now we want to, to go, OK, we have this third start here, and we want to, to create the stars in the, in the beginning. So when you are developing, you can use a very nice feature which has been composed for a long time, and it's called Override. So you can use the deployable Docker Compose file and then use a Docker, a Docker Compose .override.yml file for development. So this file will do certain things, and some of them which are also the most common ones are the, these four. First of all, you want to mount the code from your local uh, environment inside the container. So you want to edit on your local ID, for example, and this uh, code should run inside the container. Second of all, you want to change some environment variables. For example, let's say that you have a node application. You want to say that the node environment is development or is production. So you want to be able to do that, and you can do this on the, on the override. Then you can change the command. So when you run, for example, a production application, you might use something like Unicorn, which is a Python server that is production ready. But when you are developing, you want to change this command to something that auto reloads when you do changes. So you can have something like node money node or Zen in Go or the development servers for Plask or Django in Python. And you can use these servers that are automatically reloading your application where you're developing. And you can instantly see changes in your application. So I just change the file, and this file gets propagated inside the container, and it totally reloads using these three things. And last but definitely not least, you might want to expose some more ports. So let's say that uh, your production application is behind the proxy. So you don't need to expose a port outside of the container because you have an Nginx or something talking through the networking mesh to, to route the requests. But when you are developing, of course, you want to, to see the application. So you might want to expose ports, and also you, you want to expose more ports for debugging purposes. So you want to expose the debugger port and that kind of stuff depending on the, on the language that you are using to develop. Then you want to move this nice application. Now that you have your Docker Compose and Docker Compose.override files in place, and your development uh, workflow is very nice, you want to start moving to, to the CI. So you have two, two things there to do. Either you can use some CI systems that are already supporting Docker Compose. So these systems are some systems like Drone, for example, or CodeZip, where you can just take the same Compose file and just transform it a bit in order to fit in their own, um, in their own format. Or you can just use other systems like whatever you use, that, it doesn't matter, and sell out and just do Docker Compose run web, which is maybe the service, and then run the test suite inside Docker Compose. So it's really easy and it's really important at the same time to have the same stack at all stages. So when you are testing your application, you want to have the same environment, and Docker Compose can provide that either through a third party, like Drone or CodeZip, or through your own, uh, uh, through your own sellout thing. 
So the dream constitutes of, of three, three things. So you want to have the same runtime, which is provided with Docker. So with Docker, if you need to have a Docker file with, uh, with Python 2.7 and the, the exact requirements in your development environment, then it, using the image format, you can take that and run the test against it and then deploy it to production. But now you have the same thing for, with a declarative way for the whole stack. So you have, for example, a Postgres database at the exact version with exact maybe schema and everything, and you can take the whole stack and move it forward through all the steps of the pipeline of, of, your, deployed, uh, of your application. So Compose is also very good for Docker as a, as a local machine using the classic Docker Compose uh, Docker uh, commands that you used before. And now with Docker Swarm, you can also just run a command and deploy the same application to, to your production cluster. So it's really nice and it's really uh, easy going. So I'm now going to switch to a demo. So if you'd like to, to see the demo, there's a bit.ly link. You can, uh, this is a GitHub repo. You can just download it and it has also and a, a lot of other um, examples using Docker Compose for secrets and everything. But we're going to use the, the Operate demo to, to explain to you what I mean by, uh, by what I was saying before. So, oops. Wrong screen. Okay. Okay, so first we start by our Docker file. So, Andrew had the very nice tips before about how you can structure your Docker file, installing first dependencies and then moving on. So this is a very simple one. I'm just installing some uh, pip dependencies like Flask, which is a framework in Python, and Unicorn, which is the, deploy the, the production ready server we said before. Then I'm defining some environment variables and then I'm co copying in the code. Nothing, nothing really special out there. Now I wanted to also uh, tell you that if I wanted to have a different thing for development locally, I might want it to use another, another Docker file, which would be called, for example, dockerfile.dev, and in development, I would install something for some debugging tools or other tools I need for development, but at the same time, keep the image lean when I go to production. Then let's go to, to the Docker Compose file. So as you remember, the Docker Compose file is the one that will be deployed to the, to the final cluster. So as you can see here, I, I have some ports because I wanted to have some ports anyway. And then I have just an image and a command. So I don't have anything like volumes, mounting coding, or you know, special things. So this is a compose file that I will use to, to go to production. It's a pretty straightforward one. And we can actually even see it happening. So I'm, I'm just deploying this, uh, uh, this application. And this application will now uh, run and will be fine. So let's do a quick curl. So it's a, it's a pretty easy and straightforward application. It just says hello world and the, the host name of the container running. And then uh, let's see how we are going to de develop this application. So this is for, for deployment. When we want to develop, we want to uh, override some certain uh, values of the Compose file. So when I use the, the, override, uh, the override file, only the values that I have inside this file will be overridden in the final Compose file, for example. So in this case, I want to build from the local Docker file. I don't want to use any mods when I'm uh, uh, developing the application. I want to switch the command to the Flask server, which is auto-reloading, and we can have all the, the things that we said before about auto-reloading servers. And then I want to have uh, environment Flask debug equals one, because I want to debug my, my application. And I want to bind mount the, the code from my local, uh, my local folder inside the, the container. So. I'm just removing the previous stack so I can now deploy the new, the new version. So now I'm using Docker Compose app, which is starting the server. As you can see here, I have a different server running, which is the debugging server of Flask. And then I, I'm going to switch to, to a next tab. I, I'm doing the same curl. As you can see, the, the host name has changed, but the application is running. So I'm not going to go to my app, which is a very big, sophisticated application, as you can see. And I'm going to say, OK, hello, Docker Convert. I'm just clicking Save here. 
nothing, nothing really serious. So the next time, as you can see, my application has reloaded. So I could use the same stack, so the same definition, but then change only the parts that I need for development and have a very nice development experience. So as a developer, I'm very happy. I just did Docker Compose up and I could start developing my application, while the ops and the other guys are sure that the application that I used to develop is the same, the exact same thing that I give to them to deploy to the production cluster. Oops. So here's the link. There are many other demos inside there. So simple things to showcase uh, such things. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that there are some tips trips that, that you liked. We can also mingle. So you can use this link to, to book a meeting with me and uh, we can talk about Docker Compose or development environments and anything, anything you want. This is my Twitter, so you can contact me there. And thanks for listening again and see you soon.